Okay, I've started the recording. Welcome to the Wing It Call, May 4th, 2016. Pastor, take it away. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask for discernment, revelation, information, and strength to come forward, bringing peace and blessing to every person that has waited. We thank you that it's close. Lord, bring excitement and blessing to each one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So a little housekeeping here first. I know it doesn't. Hold on. There we go. Little housekeeping. It won't this won't mean a lot to a whole lot of you, but hello? Hi. How you doing? To the gym club. Hey girlfriends. How you doing today? A little shout out to you. Yeah, one of these days you'll figure it out. And now you're scratching going, what the hey? How does he know? Jerry knows everything. Now for a more personal note. Gabriel. Gabriel. This is God speaking. I know you're in Atlanta right now. And when you get back to Oceanside, I need you to act more like Jerry Maguire, a redneck witness. Can you witness for me? Uh huh. Six, nine, and shaking in your boots. It's not what I want. I want you to give me, can you get, can I get a witness? Thank you, Gabriel. I know you hear me. All right. Art, take it away. Good afternoon, Jerry. Good afternoon, Pastor. And good afternoon, Rockstar, if he's here. And anybody else that's on the line. Good afternoon to all of you. I don't know a whole bunch. It's very quiet today. Every day we are expecting it. Um, Bruce was very excited last night, I know, and I guess thought maybe something might happen last night. Just heard some things are in the works and but other than that, it is quiet as a mouse out there today. Uh, from my end at least, maybe somebody else will have something, but just looking forward to it so we can get out there and do what we gotta do. That's about all I can say today. Are you trying to say that it's as quiet as a church church mouse? I think it's a church mouse. It's pastor's church mouse. Yeah, you, you have some mouses over there at church, don't you, Pastor? Yeah, but my my mouses are loud, and my mars, mouse has been talking to to the uh, Pastor McGuire. Oh, Pastor McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if if it's Redneck McGuire, Redneck Witness, then we got to have Deacon Ico. That's right. You better bring the deacon in. <laughs> uh, well, I'll and, bow out for the deacon. <laughs> Rock, right. Rockstar, I sent you an email. Did you get that? Say it for me. What, just now? Yeah. Like, oh, no, I did not. Um, I guess I should go look at it, huh? Yes, please. I know why, why, why I do my disclaimer. And t okay. today it is uh, – I'm sorry, disclaimer first. We're not attorneys. We're not financial advisors. We're not CPAs. This is our opinion. Sometimes our, we're a little stronger with our opinions than the rest of the times because we're passionate about it. This is what this is, you know, passion. How do you feel? And so there's the disclaimer. The rest of the disclaimer can be found on the wingitcall.com, and you'll find, underneath, find it underneath the disclaimer. Oh, and if I didn't say it last call, um, thank you very much for everybody that donated to Oki. Um, it was a, it was a nice a nice sum that helped bring him from the negative to the positive and help him keep his bills paid while he's going back and forth between the hospital and the home, and you know, like anything else, helps put a little gas in the car, and and we all could use that right now, but. We all could use it, but I want to say this. He's the founding founding member of, of Dinarland, 
and I felt passionate about helping him. So, Oki, thank you for letting me do that. It was my privilege. I'm Go sorry, ahead, Jerry. Oki's not feeling too well today. Doesn't sound very good. You know, he has uh, was a COPD and. Of course, a lot of problems in that respect, but I, as I said, you don't sound too good today. He said, I don't feel too good today. Of course, he didn't really have any rumor tell, but um, he just, and Diva was going to call him. Talk to him, too, so he might, everybody might want to pray for him, because sure hope he makes it long enough to enjoy the fruits of his labor over the last 13 years, and for sure. So everybody be praying for him. Thank, thank you very much, Art. Yep, got the disclaimer. Everything's good. Rockstar, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. I, I I reviewed it real quick, so I get the gist of it. Uh, we just, well, it was, it, it was just the questions for the day, and I wanted you to have a copy of them too. Yeah, that's fine. I got I got. I'm going to be in the car for half the call, so uh, okay, I got to run out. Pick some perfect. Up, so. So I'm trying to I'm trying to think um, if there's anything else that needs to be addressed before we uh, proceed on. We got that. I have that. Then I did that and that. Okay. And from my standpoint, in this, I hate this but it's the best that I can do for now. Um, we're one day closer. We've heard it so many times, just something else. I'm going to be nixing off my list of, of things I'm never going to say again. Any minute, any second, you know, things like that. But the upside is the things that are going on behind the scenes is awesome. So I'm going to leave it at that. Star two to raise your hand because today, wait a minute, got a few things to read. Well, there's a lot of questions, and they're not going to be in order, so just suck it up, web mistress. Um, one of them, did Iraq actually declare they are asset and gold back? They did it in the mosque. I don't think that's considered public yet, but they did make the announcement in the mosque. You heard Bruce talk about it on his call. Um, so there you go. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. This is my third attempt to post a question for Jerry in the correction, correct web section. Clarification on the Zim structured payout. Well, the latest is, Jerry, I appreciate your calm, no-nonsense style to inform us about what you are all hearing. ICO structured payment example for a ZIM exchange producing more than 500 million USD is not totally clear to me. Well, if you have ZIM and it's more than 500 million, you go into a structured payout, meaning it could be anywhere, depending on your age, could be a minimum, it's a minimum of two years, could be a maximum of 100 years. That's what I'm taking because the bank, off of the ZIM total of your exchange and after the, the particular structured payout you're going to take, could be anywhere from the bank will keep 75% up to 90%, it just all depends. That's called negotiations. So that's the best I can give you on the structured payout. Um, and everything else, we're shooting from the hip here. Of course, I asked if we'd get a banker on the call, and that didn't work well because there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables, and, and I understand. I was just a uh, question and I asked and, and that's how far I got. Basically, no. So we really won't know the whole the whole ball game until we get to the bank. And we're sitting there patiently after they've counted the money and we're talking with everybody. You know, going through the exchange station and then 
onward from there. So that yes, okay. So we're gonna oh yeah, star two to raise your hand. We're gonna try to hit a lot of callers today. Today is caller day. So one of the one of the favorites right at the top of the list, B on the web. Come on down. Hey Jerry, thank you for taking my call. Uh, okay, one, Ray Rams one 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 question so we can try to get a lot of people, okay? And no no right. subpart A, B, and C. Understood. Okay. Ray Rand said this morning on his call that when he talked to the banks, he was told they can't do structured payout because it's not part of their charter. Well, it depends on what bank he talked to. According to him, he talked to Wells Fargo. Well, that's – if you pick a question, and I'm not – I'm just – I'm being very practical here. To answer your question, I'm going to say this. Pick a question that you, we've all heard over time and then look for the answer, and you're going to find both ends of the spectrum. And so it really boils down to we won't know till we get there, but I, I have it from a pretty reliable source that it's going to be a structured payout. And I want to say it as calmly as I can this way. With this amount of money, if you're if you're to shock the financial system with no controls and say and they go, here you go, it's all yours, go crazy. And everybody starts just dumping money in left and right. Well, it, it takes like anything else, anything from water in your yard to putting gas in your car to air in a tire. I speak from mechanic terms. If you dump it in so fast, it it you know you get a problem. So money, like anything else, has to leach into the system so that it's a slow event. Otherwise, you're going to have a an out of kilter event that sh that shocks the system. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand it makes sense, but I also understand that a bank can only do something if it's in the charter. Maybe the charter's changed that we don't know about. Might be. All righty. I appreciate your talk, and I'll go ahead and take myself out. Thank you, sir. Well, let's see. Port St. Lucie, Florida, 772. Come on down. Hello, is that me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. How are you? Uh, nice Good. talking to you again. Um, you know, I I just have a question. Um, some people are saying that, like Bruce and Joseph, they say that uh, we are asset backed, and other people say that we are not. The U I'm referring to the U.S. Are we or are we not? <laughs> If we were at that fact, it would be all over the headline. It would be the topic of the day. Okay, yes, that, that's what my, my friends were saying. Yeah, there, there, okay, so. there's, some, there's a popular belief that, that at certain levels we're asset back, but I don't even think that can be true. Um, it, it's just uh, you can't forget who it was the other day. Um, so you, you can't have a mix of the two. We either are completely or we are not. Um, and that makes sense to me. So, so we just uh, have to continue waiting until we are asset back to for the whole revaluation, right? No. No, we can RV and have the global uh, revaluation begin without all being asset, without being asset back. China isn't asset back. China only said what it would look like when they went asset back. So nobody's asset back right now. It's it's um I think it's more wishful thinking on, on the part of a certain group. Um I, than in actuality. I, I read I read an article of Zimbabwe saying that they were uh they were asset back. 
uh, it was a newspaper in, in of Zimbabwe, the Africa, and somebody mm-hmm. posted in the in in the forum. So I went to the link, and it was uh, saying that they were at the back. Yeah, you know what a great litmus test is. Um, if you only if you're only hearing it from one publication source, chances are it's not a fact. Um, if everybody's carrying the same story and citing the same uh, uh, story sources, then you've got a pretty good idea of where things are at. That's 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 um, um you know it's very confusing. It's confusing even to financial people what's going on. When I when I talk to some bankers, they haven't got a clue about what I'm saying, and, and and they're saying, "Oh, is that what happened with the Enron thing? Is that how they fixed that?" I mean, it really is. It really is pretty amazing. Uh, uh, the 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 lack of understanding that's out there right now. So um, I just, you know, me right now, especially with all of the news stories coming out, uh, there, there's a lot out there. Um, it's really hard to decipher what's true or not, and I've sort of taken the position. Again, this is just me, but I've taken the position that that until we're weeks into post RV, I don't think anybody really <laughs> knows what's going on. Um, we're going to have our story based on our exchange. Other people are going to have their stories. Other countries are going to have their stories. It's 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 going to be a mishmash for for quite a while. So. Um, I don't know if that that helps or it, it sort of calms me. I don't I don't react to to uh, these publications the way I used to. I don't take everything as a fact. I take it as an interpretation. Yes, it it, uh, it helps. Thank you. So, how far do you think we are from going to the to the bank uh, receiving the eight hundred numbers and and going to the bank? Like in your opinion, just in my um, in my opinion, it's going to happen before the fifteenth. That's my opinion. It could happen in the next ten minutes. Yeah. Well, All right, ma'am. So thank you. you know. and, I, and I really thank you. Thank you for the information. So our next one is Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's me. Hello. You call Gary? Yes, ma'am. Will you believe I'm in a rainstorm running in trying to talk to you? <laughs> well, you're, you're, you don't. He, he, hold on. Lo, lower your voice because you're you're screaming in the microphone and we can hear you really well. Okay, let me unmute you again. Okay. Is, All right. Is that better? Is yes, that that, that's much better. That's much better. Okay, sorry. Hello, is it, did I hear Art speaking earlier? Art, yes. Art, uh, I love his voice. Okay, I would like to ask a question. It is regarding you. Well, I know it's one question. Really and truly, if we are not asset back, can this happen for us? Sure. I thought we after that before uh with something about uh oh i i think the the lightning bolt has taken her out of you don't hear me yeah i can hear you now okay i heard someone saying that we would be one to one parity if we're asset back would we still be one to one parity or is that when we will become one to one parity? I I don't know. We we will only know when we get to the bank. That's why I've always said have a flexible game plan. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce this. I've I've seen it before. Donovan, Missouri, 573, come on down. Did I say that right? John, 573. Hello, Missouri. Hello. 
Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's Papa Bluff. <laughs> well, uh, uh, when you called in, I'm just going by the name or the city that uh, shows up when you call in. Oh, it's Papa Bluff. All right, I've, go I've ahead. Got a, I've got a question on the structure payout. Uh, if you take that, can you uh, designate, like, after your death who would get, you know, control of it or whatever? Absolutely. Okay. You, but, we're, we're talking about your portion of the structured side. Right. And after the after the after the time period is up, then it it comes back to you anyway. So, however you you take care of your portion, that's how the the bank side of it when they're done with it will come back to you, and then it automatically rolls to whoever you want. Uh, that's you know, like say after I die, can my heirs get the structure payout still? You know. Like that, or do I have to put it in something else or something? Yeah. You know? Well, if it if it's still in a structured payout after you after you kick the bucket, it's still going to be that way until the time of it is up. All right, that answers my question perfectly. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. own head you know what have i got a we're going to go to austin texas 512 come on down <laughs> hello austin texas 512 come on down you've muted yourself you're unmuted come on down austin texas well, I guess he doesn't want to talk. All right. Now, this is another one from Port, Port St. Lucie, Florida, 772. Charlie, come on down. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, okay, thanks, Jerry. Uh, in the initial period three or four years ago, more emphasis was placed on getting clean and clear currency certificates for your exchange. Therefore, we were encouraged to keep everything in its original shipment form with your invoices and all that. Recently, there's been a lot of switching to central control and con conversion systems where we're going to be doing off-site work, and the emphasis is just on running the currency through De La Rue machines. So my question is, is it more important to segregate your currencies by denomination and by currencies so that you can go through the De La Rue's faster, or does it, do we still have to stick with the original um, theory that we needed to document the purchasing and uh, clean and clear uh, certificate approach. I've, I've talked about this before. Have your currency segregated by denomination, by country, right? and that way when they put it through the machine, it's a lot easier, there's less confusion, and that way you've counted it yourself and you know how much is in each stack. That's what I've done. I put, I put a band around it with one of those uh, the old recipe cards with how much is in there, and and how much. And that way, if there's any discrepancy, you can when they do each stack, you go wait a minute, whoa whoa, let's look at this. So it, it's much easier for everybody. Got it. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Have a good day. You go too. ahead, Art. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, um, a couple of things. Well, uh, uh, what he just said, clean and clear certificate. Of course, the reason for that is if you're buying some major purchase that you can show that to whomever, and it just shows you're not using drug money or something like that. That you didn't. It's not an illegal got or gain somehow or another. That's another reason for having that. I intend to ask for some of them while I'm there. Plus, also, a realtor told me that if you're buying a house and it's a million or two or something like that. Before they'll show a house, sometimes they want to know you've got the money to buy it. They don't want you wasting their time. 
So I'm going to request a letter on the bank letterhead saying this man has enough money to buy a house in the oh, in the range of whatever. You know, that's another thought. Uh, but the reason I wanted to comment was the, the problem out there about being gold backed, asset backed, whatever, is that you got Yosef the other day saying to all of us, where the whole world is gold backed. You got Dizzy Bear coming on the other call saying, uh, we're not gold backed. The whole world is not gold backed. Don't know who's telling you that, but they don't know what you're talking about. So there's a discrepancy there, and I think Ico was trying to point that out. There's so many things floating around out there, nobody knows for sure. And then. Last night, I understand that uh, Bruce said that you uh, they're not accepting fiat money in this country any longer, and somebody come on a call this morning disputing that, saying, what are you talking about? I'm still using the greenbacks I've got in my pocket to buy stuff. So it gets kind of confusing when you hear all this sort of stuff. So I just thought I'd mention that, as this, and that's why there's confusion, because there's too many different opinions, and who's right and who's wrong, we don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. Thank you, Art. That's why I was saying, you know, pick a pick a question because you're going to find answers on both ends of the spectrum. That's okay, right. Austin, Austin, Texas. Can you hear me now? Hmm. Let's see here. Austin, Texas, you are un, you are open to the world. Come on down. We can hear you. Well, we could. Whatever you're doing, you were unmuted there for a little bit. Try it again. You know, some people are just technology, technologically challenged. Bless their hearts. And you know, here's the sad part. They live in Austin, and Dell Computers is down there. You would. You would think that they could they could operate that mute button, but one oh one push button unmute. Well I I guess not. All right. We'll come back to him. Come on. Miami, Florida, 305. Come on down. Thank you, Jerry, for taking my call, and thank you, Art, for the clarification. But I, my question has already been answered, but I also listened to uh, Ray Ray's call, and he, in my opinion, he gave a clarification that he wasn't sure about the trust that is often being mentioned. But he said it was a plus, and he gave so many different answers. And there's a lot of disinformation out here that maybe ones that go to one call, go back and listen at the calls before we run somebody under the bus. And I see often people call in with you, um, Miracle Queen, and, you know, quite a few others. They call in, and then they go on another call, and they make it seem, it's, it, it just adds to the misinformation. So, Revan, put that in your blue moon thoughts. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Deacon, I know. Deacon, Deacon I know. thank you guys so much. But we all trying together, no matter how many times you say it's your opinion, they twist the question around and come back and ask, ask the same question. It just doesn't make sense in this world today with everything that's going on and people on our edge. So thank you for just listening. My question has been answered by Art, and have a blessed day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Deacon Ico, got any comments? Oh, okay. Our our next our next caller is going to be. Prescott, Arizona, 928. Come on down. And star two to raise your hand. Uh, Jerry, can you hear me? All day long, ma'am. Come on. Okay, that's great. I have a question for Ico. He was about to tell us, and I was going to take notes on it, on what to do if we were confronted with a 
half fiat backed, half asset backed currency exchange on the last call. Hmm. And I'm standing in line at the drugstore. So I'm gonna have uh, to get back well, in five minutes. Okay, well I'll I'll I'm gonna put I'm gonna mute her out and we'll come back to her after our next okay. call or so. So Prescott, I'm gonna mute you out for a minute. We'll come back to you when he's available. Kansas City, Missouri, home of the second best barbecue next to Austin, Texas. Eight one six. Come on down. No, it's home of the first barbecue. <laughs> Listen. I guess it all depends. Uh, I've never had Austin's barbecue. So. <laughs> well, it's Franklin Barbecue down there, and it's so good. He only makes say a couple hundred pounds, you know, daily, and mm -hmm. and literally. Literally, the line starts four hours before the doors even open, and it was oh, so word. bad they used they used to get the college kids to stand in line for so you know so much an hour, and and they stopped that. Oh my! Is that you, Iko? Is that what? you rattling around? Oh, I was gonna say no. I'm just sitting. <laughs> But anyway, what's your question, ma'am? Okay. On the trust, I'm a little bit confused on this. Uh, when we go in... <laughs> So let's try this again. Woo. So let me go back here. Kansas City. Hello? Okay, go ahead. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Um we never have – I'm confused a little bit on the trust. We never have had a trust, never had a reason for one. And we go in for exchange, they're going to have a skeleton trust there. So how many – we're supposed to go in with, I've heard, three or four names to put on that. And, like, do I put myself or my husband as, the like, the head of it? And then can you give me some ideas on that? Well, I'm not sure which one they're using, so if I start, you know, talking questions like or answers, I'm going to get thrown underneath the bus. Okay. So well, I'm going to. Well, is it something I, that we can change later? I don't know. I, oh. I've asked for clarification, and I've been told no. I can't have that. I can't have that information. Remember when I said at the beginning of the call, I've asked for a banker to come on. Yeah. Hey, that sounds like wind. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Oh, there it is. Sorry, hold on, Ico. Okay, I, 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 Ico, go ahead. Okay, if you name yourself as first compliance officer and head trustee. You can name anybody you want, and you can fire anybody you want off your board of trustees. That's the ticket. Okay. Okay. But and but, the board of trustees is supposed to be who? People we know, or they're at the bank, or what? God, yes. No, people you know and trust. Okay. <laughs> Hence the word trustee. Um, yes. But I'll tell you something. Listen, this is what everybody has to do. There is now so much confusion and so much information out there about different types of trusts. I can't even keep it straight. So okay. what, what we ha what we need to do is we want to set up that trust at the exchange meeting so that we so that we exchange our money into the trust, which which uh, defers a you know the tax event and also begins the asset protection. And then we want to find a professional to to take that trust and make it our own. Um, and Wells okay. Fargo understands that. So. Okay. Uh, 
they're not they're not there to pull the wool over eyes. They're just trying to help people out. And nobody wants to get that very simple fact. Right. Um, you know, it's 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 been made as as simple as it can be for folks who don't understand what's going on. And for those of us who think we know what's going on, <laughs> we're going to find out we didn't know either. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, that's okay, why I, I wondered can, if I, once we did the skeleton trust, if we could take it and go to our lawyer and say, okay, help us. <laughs> right. This the, the If you go in with nothing, this is just a protection for yourself. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. The, the lease that the lease that they'll hold is is the seventy five percent. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now we're going back to the lady that wishes to speak to Deacon Ico in Prescott, Arizona. Come on down. Hey there. Um, I go, um, I want to go back to my question, which was, if we are confronted with an exchange from fiat to asset-backed or vice versa, um, which one do you think is possible and what do we do? Hello? Could he, anybody hear he, me? Yes, ma'am. He He's there. He might have had, he might have had to mute for just a second. <clears throat> Darn it. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm multitasking here. <laughs> you, you want me to to come back to her? Yeah. Ma'am, I'm going to come back to you again here. That's Wittensville, MA, is that Massachusetts? No, Montana, uh, Maine? Heck, I don't know. 508, come on down. It is Massachusetts. And thank you for um, letting me ask the question. I, I have a comment and then a question. I am Mama KK on the forum. And uh -huh. if possible for um, Pastor Stephen and or Yosef to PM me so that I can ask them a question, I would appreciate that. Now, my question to this is to Ico, so I don't know if he's too busy. Uh, well, he, um, he, he uh, I'm, go ahead. I'm here, but it's it's just it's just going to be difficult for the next five minutes, guys. I, I can't. I I got to I got to answer questions here and I got to I didn't answer questions there and I'm not doing No 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 I I, uh, I take uh, Ico go ahead and and uh mute yourself I'm out, mute and out. When you're and, okay. and when you're ready you just come back in so I'll I'll handle it from here All right ma'am go go ahead Okay I can I can ask the question cuz someone else might remember uh, and know the answer when uh Ico was giving us his spreadsheet and explaining how it all works someone asked him okay do this because we were trying to figure out what the interest would be on um 75 percent of well he started with 500 million but they said try a billion and he said well let's take a real number let's say 10 billion uh, because of the zim when i did the math on that i came out with a rate of three digits with no decimals. And I wanted to know if I did my math right. Three digits and no decimals? Right. Um, so let's let's look at it this way. It, it's easy to, if you've got just a billion dollars and you get 10%, that's a hundred million dollars in interest. So I'm I'm not sure you might have just hit a wrong button on your calculator. It might be one of those calculators that's dumber than we are. 
Okay, well, with the, one of the things that wasn't made clear even on the interest, it's quarterly, but is it that same amount four times a year or spread over a year? Well, I'm thinking quarterly, but that's just me. Okay. I, I want to I stay well-funded with my interest. <laughs> Well, I, I absolutely believe uh, this it seems like a real uh, answer to prayer, in my opinion, to have it be a structured uh, situation because there'll still be more than I know what to do with, with just Maybe. the interest. So, exactly. Uh, All right, ma'am. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, so we're going to try this again. We're going to go back to Prescott here as soon as my Prescott. Prescott, go ahead. He's uh, Ico is unavailable for at least five minutes. Uh, actually, I'm back now. <laughs> okay. So, okay. so to answer Go. the last question, the interest, my understanding is the interest is compounded quarterly. You're going to be getting a check every 90 days. It's going to be more money than you could possibly know what to do with, and you're right. So just sit back and start laughing now. Okay, ma'am and Prescott, your question? Um, <laughs> it feels so silly to say it for the third time, Ico, but you started to tell okay. us how to uh, deal with an asset to fiat-backed currency exchange if one of the partners was asset-backed and the other was not. Yes, um, and I've had some clarification since I answered that last time. Um, that will never be the case. If one of, if, if for example, if the U.S. is still fiat back, and we go into the exchange, it's a fiat to fiat exchange. Um, if China declares their asset back officially, uh, we won't have an exchange until we're asset back. So that's the bad thing. Um, but they won't do that unless they want the world to uh, basically tumble down around them. So um, it looks like with fiat to fiat, that's the end of the story. And everything else you hear about asset back at some at some tier one level or tier two level, it's all wishful thinking. Um, you know, until until it's mainstream on Bloomberg and CNN and, and everywhere else, you can just take it as river kill as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure I'm going to get flagged for that, but that's that's my analysis to date. Uh, we're getting a lot of people saying things they wish were true and they simply are not true yet. They're going to be true, but they're not true yet. Are the banks safe to hold our money in a structured payout as long as we're working on what sounds like the old system that we're used to? Yes, they are. They want this. They want this a hundred times more than we do the banks because this is going to bail them out. This is going to give them real bottom line, genuine assets, and that's what they want because they're not. They know they can't function in the fiat system any longer, and it's. It's it's not it's not that well, I'll just say this. In my opinion, it's not that people are trying to screw this up now. What they're doing is they're trying to keep it on an even keel until the new system is one hundred percent in place. I mean if, if if you can just imagine a brand new hardware system handling a brand new software system around the world, 208 central banks have got to set this thing up and having it work perfectly. If one of them is off, the whole thing is off. So that, that's why it's taking this long. They're just, they're just working it down to the zero point where everybody's on board. Not even on board, that's the wrong word. Um, everybody's simply sorted out. Uh, and in the meantime, they don't want the market to crash. Nobody wants the market to crash. Then there's then there's no income for anybody. There's there's there's, there's you know there's no movement of capital. Uh, 
uh, the Chinese especially don't want the U.S. market to crash. We're their, their number one customer. Um, so it's just it's just taken the time it's taken because it's not about a time. It's about a system being complete. And one step has to get done, and then another step has to get done, and then another step. And finally, it gets to the very last step where there's nothing left to be done to make it push the button. So um, I know it's hard. For everybody, everybody's got money problems right now, and a lot of us thought this was going to go down two years ago and, and, and basically did some faulty financial planning around it. Uh, but you're just going to have to you're just going to have to sit and wait for it to happen. It's going to happen. It is happening. So I go with the banks. I can understand that they would want our currency because it's currency from countries that have a lot of natural resources. Does that currency become asset-backed at some point after we do the exchange? Because otherwise, why do they want it so much? Well, yes, but it's not like this. Not like this magic thing that has it. It's it's when at this point the last report I got was there were 180 countries in the WTO who are prepared to go asset back at the moment. Now, and when I say that, it might take a few weeks for everybody to get their their, their stuff together, but they they want to go asset back as soon as possible. There are still holdouts in the Western bank pieces. We're being told. Um, and they're going to take a little long simply because they're larger, more complex, there's more players. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just the nature of the beast. So eventually we will all be asset back, everybody, and the world will, world currencies will be on a parity. Not, not, not exactly one to one, but, you know, one to a dollar ten or one to ninety-eight or, or something to that effect, but essentially in the same ballpark, so that so that commerce can function on a on on a a, a, a narrow set of values. Um, everybody knows what everything's going to cost. There won't be sweatshops in Taiwan. There won't be uh, uh, unions <laughs> in the United States. Um, all of that's going to change. Eventually, not immediately, but eventually. But it's going to well, take I'm... time. It's going to be difficult. But the banks are okay. The banks are safe. If that's what your main question is, if that's what your main concern is, the banks Yeah, are my safe. main concern for all of us is we've waited so long in, as you said, some difficult circumstances, and we want to feel comfortable that when we are working with these large entities – um, that we're going to be protected and that our money is going to be safe after all these years. It, it will be. I know, Jerry, but just us saying that doesn't mean. So. Uh, I, well, it, it, it's let's let's look at it from the redneck side of it. We really have no choice but to trust a bank, and I'm going to stick with a bigger one, one of the tier one or the big four banks. They're the only ones right now that can really handle the massive amount that you're going to have. Look at it like this. Let's let's say that you end up with, and we're, and we're going to throw out a really good number here. Say you end up with $50 billion. If From you go on the way. Ma'am? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I said from your mouth to God's ear, fifty billion sounds just <laughs> nifty. Uh, okay, well anyway, let's let's just say fifty billion dollars. I I pulled up Frost Bank. They're here in Texas. They they revoked their or they actually they gave up their their Fed charter and went with a state bank char, state bank charter. If you look at their total assets, they have maybe 60, 62 to 66 billion dollars. If if you're to drop 25 billion dollars into their bank, you are their number one depositor. 
that puts you in a pretty hefty control of their bank, and they may not want that. They want – do you see what I'm getting at? Absolutely, because I was in a small business. If you're – if you have one large client, you basically work for them, and it's very hard to keep any balance. So yes, I do understand. Okay, so you're you're going to be sticking with a a bigger bank of the top tier one tier, you know, tier one banks, top four, so that there's many different options. So to trust a bank, you we really have no choice. Banks have been around since the beginning of time. There's no way to get around them. They're just part of life. So what are you going to do if you don't go to a bank? Or if you don't trust a bank, what are you going to do? Um, well, just look for things like state chartered banks with smaller amounts than billions and billions and lay off some of it to credit unions. Some of the big ones can take it and look for other state banks, I guess. But you're right. If you had $50 billion, I don't know where else you could go. Maybe overseas. Your limit you're, yes, but you still have to go through a bank, and they're going to have. And, and you're not trying to get away. You're not trying to hide anything because if you do that, not trying somebody, to hide, going to pay all the taxes that are due. Want to exactly be life. Right. So, what you're wanting to do kind of complicates your life. Think about how many banks, state charter banks, you would have to go to to not be the number one depositor, it, and, and that's a headache in itself. So why not stick with a bank that's already set up, prepared, and has been researching and developing so that they can handle this massive transfer of wealth from, from one, one group of people to another who are going to distribute it out to our brothers and sisters? That's why I'm not even arguing. Well, in myself, I mean, I know what I said doesn't sound like it, but inside my mind, I'm thinking, yes, I would go with the lead bank, and yes, I'd be very grateful for a structured payout, and then I could do my charitable projects, and they can take care of the money, and that works really well for me. I just want to make sure that the system is going to work. It, it You're going to be okay. All right. All right, Jerry, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> we we could spend another 20 minutes hashing this out, and I know there's people chomping at the bit, but you know where I'm going with this. It's it's going to be okay. All relax, right, that'll be relax. Jerry. Have have a blue moon or a margarita. And there is a new, there is a picture up on my web page of the Relax Inn. Oh, great! That'll be great. Right. Well, thank you, for your time, Jerry, and thank you, Ico. All right. So we're going to go on. We're on to Valera, Texas, three two five. Come on down. Hello, Donna, three two five. Yes. How are you go ahead. today? Good. How Hello? are you doing? Oh, great. I'm doing fine, thank you. I have a a uh, call that I mean a question on uh, if we have gifted to uh, small amounts to our family, like twenty five thousand or fifty thousand. Do we uh, need necessarily to give them the eight hundred numbers to go in, or do we just have them go into the bank without a Later on, would they still get the same amount, do you think? I think that the first opportunity they have a chance to go in, I would go then. Okay. So you would suggest maybe giving them the 800 number so they can get an appointment? Uh -huh. and Okay. I didn't know if there would be a difference or if they'd get the same amounts with that small of a bill. Um. I would go in if if you can get in. I would go in first, okay? Okay. How's how's that? I uh, appreciate. It. Oh, that's great. I thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mhm. Mm bye bye. Now we're gonna go back to the questions. 
Uh, let me see, where was it at? Question 15, for those that are paying attention. Help, please. Gifted my brother a few years ago one Zim note, and he went and bought a few hundred dollars in BND. He leaves for France later today and asked me to meet him an hour ago. He hands me an envelope with the currencies along with receipts and my gift letter. He neglected to do a power of attorney so I could exchange for him. He looked so stressed I couldn't get mad. I'm thinking I will exchange getting a structured payout with a holding trust, put his funds in a sub trust. Is this how you would handle it? I know I'll have a structured payout. Well, since your brother trusts you and you have a good relationship, exchange it all. And if you want, you know, I, I like the master's trust. You can set up a, another trust and you can endow the money, his portion, from one, one trust to another. You can make him, you know, the, the, the person in charge of the trust and problem solved. It's called endowing from one trust to another. I believe that will work. Iko, does that seem to be pretty close to a, a good answer? Uh-oh. Well, I'm, I'm a little concerned about, um, is it the original gifting letter? That's what it says. See, I'm not worried about his brother. I'm worried about his brother's wife, his brother's kids, his brother's kids' kids, his brother's kids' uncles. Um, I think I think what would be, again, this is business, right? This isn't family. This is business. I think he should get a notarized letter from his brother releasing all claims to that currency. He's already on a plane going to France. That's, that's, then up to God. Um, I mean, a simple thing is just take just take the currency and exchange it and do like you said, you know, set up a sub-trust uh, that his brother's the administrator of and his brother has access to all that money. Um, and, he's out, and he's out of the picture. And he's out of the picture. But has anybody copied that gifting letter? And it's not, and it's not legally uh, negated. I guess I don't know what the legal term is, but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Once lawyers get involved, it's just you know. So my suggestion <laughs> is, with with the with the money that he has, do your exchange first. You know, have them count yours first. Then have them. You know, put that off to the side and say, okay, now I want this one counted. And then you have a printout of two different transactions. And you say, okay, this is, this is what you gave me. This is mine. And that way there, there's a, a paper trail that shows amounts. Okay, but that, the bank's not going to be happy with that. Uh, I know, but here's the worst thing you can ever do is employ family, do things for family, unless you're in complete control from the get-go because there's going to be issues. I'd like to t I would love to tell you about the three T's, but I'm not going to. It's a truck driver-ism. I've told Ico about it, and he's, he's laughed until he couldn't laugh anymore, but it's true. <clears throat> Family is not the best thing to hire unless you've got such an outstanding relationship that it will withstand everything. I think we've answered that question. So we want to go on to our next caller. Come on, computer screen. This is not Bonehead. This is Austin, Texas, 512. Um, you're open. Hello, we hear you making noise. Last four of your phone number is 1650. 
Hello, Jerry. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh. <clears throat> Jerry, I know we're all excited about everything that's coming down the pike. And, you know, having heard uh, the uh, conference calls, you know, that have gone on last night and this morning, and your conference call today has been very enlightening. We're all looking forward to this happening, and, and yet we keep going, it seems literally, from week to week to week to week. You know, I, I think what I'm building up to is, you know, Iraq apparently has has completed all of the demands that the IMF had made uh, back, you know, several months ago. And it, it looks like with the ISX now opening up into the international market and with all that is going on with the bank being now 100% compliant with banking standards, international banking standards, it appears with what's going on with SADAR's uh, protesters and a body moving quickly to assign, uh, you know, the new finance, finance ministers into the, to the field, that we should be right on the cusp of things. I know that, that everybody's heard this time and time and time again, but we're running out of things, you know, that they need to do. W would you agree with that? Pretty much, are we there, you know, from the standpoint of everything that needs to get done now? Or yes, is there something you got, else holding you got You got to understand. Uh -huh. We're we're in the I'd say we're in the final act of the play of the theater production, and this is this is a global theater production. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And so right now everybody's looking at Iraq, but it really is a a, a global process we're going through. So they're the ones. Look over here. Look what the right hand is doing. Don't watch the left hand. Please don't look over here. And that's <laughs> why things are going on over there. Now it, it it does have a bearing, but just you know, Iraq and Iran signed a signed an agreement that one would not go before the other because yeah, they're, they're trading partners, right? Yeah. It would it would be such an un, an imbalance if one within hours of one going and the other one not it would be uh, not pretty. So I hope that answers your question. It, it does, you know, but, you know, we're still on that, that situation of it just seems like we're going from day to day to day. It, you know, we, we were waiting last Christmas for this thing to come through. And I know a lot has transpired between then and now. But, you know, it, it, it's just extremely, you know, frustrating to, to be hanging on from day to day to day to day. And I, I know there's nothing that you can say or that any of the guys, you know, can come forth and say it's a waiting game. But uh, I just wanted to, to kind of state that it just appears we're finally at that point where it could go within the next few minutes, as Art has said. And uh, so we wait. And we wait. Yeah, what, and your, what, is, what is your other options? It, you don't? There are none. Well, you actually said the key to it. You said there, we're getting that, we're getting to the point where there's nothing left to do. And that is exactly the point that they, that they want to get to. They want there to be nothing left to chance. And, mm -hmm. Uh, the problem is it, the, the problem is knowing what those last few things are, but it appears we're at, we're at the last few things. Um, and then everything that everybody says is going to happen, all of, all the prosperity packages, all of this, all of that, the TRNs. I mean, you just you can just go on and on and on down the list. They're all yes, going sir. to happen all at once. That's that's. That's the other thing. It's not. It's, it's not. It's not one thing holding it up. It's not another thing holding it up. They're all coming down to this. 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 The ground zero, really. And then yes, it's going to expand from there. It's going to going to push the button, and it's all going to expand from there. So we just got to hang in. 
hopefully, hopefully a few more hours, probably a few more days. Um, but if you look at it, if, if, if you look, if, if you can step way back, way back, and look at the progression of events and how the intel has changed and how it's, how the, the world that, uh, uh, it's being affected or, or at least the, the issues that are being affected get, keep getting smaller and smaller and fewer and fewer. That, that, that shows you what needs to happen. Um, and that it is happening and that we are clearly very, very close. Um, yeah, and that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I understand completely. And I, I do just want to say I thank you guys, all of you, you know, uh, for, for the roles you played in giving us information and helping us get through all of this. But uh, God bless us. I hope we see this thing pretty soon because I, I know there are a lot of people, and I, I'm fortunately not one of them, but I know there are a lot of people out there that could use this tomorrow. Yep. Thank you, so sir. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, let's see. Refresh, refresh. Houston, can you hear me now? Two eight one. Yeah, I got down. Yes, I think that's me. Go ahead. How you doing? Not bad. What is your question for the day? One question. Yes, sir. One question only, and here comes. Can you clarify about the eight hundred numbers being ready in the computer at the bank so that once they push the button, we get those numbers. That's the primary thing that I'm waiting on. So I'm going to answer it like this. No. I can neither confirm nor deny what you're saying because I don't know. Okay. That's a fair answer. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, when it refreshes here, we're going to be going to Oklahoma. Jenkins, Oklahoma, 918. Come on down. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I just wanted to weigh in. Uh, I've listened to your calls many times. And uh, is Ico still there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh yeah, I'm here. Okay, Ico. Uh, I'm going to take you up on your comment. I'm going to flag you. I uh -oh. am just. I'm just like you. I have been a Midwest design build contractor for over 40 years. Uh, that's how I've made my money, and like you. I've been involved in the banking industry. Here's what I'm going to say. I applaud you all. I really do. I applaud both of you all for bringing in the structured payments, the sheltered trust, and all that. But I am of the belief from the background I came from that you came from, Ico. I'm going to keep my <laughs> yes. I'm going to keep my eyes open, my ears open, and one hand over my rear when I go into exchange. It's not that I yep. don't trust the banks. That isn't it at all. And I heard Joseph say this on one call. Yes, you can put your money in a non-interest-bearing account and go on and do your own thing. That is exactly 
what I'm going to do. Why? Because all the questions that have come out on the sheltered trust, the structured payouts, you can handle that after the fact. In other words, I'm telling people listening to this call, why are you going to take the aspirin before you have the headache? It doesn't make any sense. Just do it very briefly and go on and you'll be fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So our next person is Water on the Web. Come on down. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Ico. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Got a quick question for you. The um, the trust, if we take the trust and if uh, Wells Fargo must be one of the trustees, can I, can I be the head trustee just in case I, you know, want to do something that they, you know, can get them off the trust? I would think so. I, I have, That's some of the questions that that I have that I'm trying to find answers to. And so right. far, I have not, I have not received an answer mm-hmm. back. Yeah, because I, I mean, I was going back and forth thinking, you know, is a good deal, a bad deal, whatever. Um, I'm not have no problems with structured payout. It's just the fact if they want to be trustee, then I have a problem with that. But in any case, if I do take the trust and um, if I want to change over to, if it's not um, a common law trust. I can change it over to a common law trust, uh, non-statutory um, trust, right? Well, I, I, that's a question for an attorney, and that's an area mm-hmm. that I'm not even going to address. It's it, That's a big one, and so All I right. don't get myself in trouble or anybody else. I'm not going to address it. Sorry. Well, Jerry. <laughs> I know it. I, I know that's not the answer you're looking for, ma'am, but, you know, today is one question Wednesday, hug a redneck. Okay, well, I'll I'll find a redneck and hug one. All right. Thank you, (laughs) ma'am. Okay, thank you. Next, we're going to go to, oh, come on, where did it, they put their hand down. Darn it. Phoenix, Arizona, come on down. Is that me, Jerry? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much for taking my call. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I am somewhat new to this, and I'm also one of the people who um, believes, and my partner does not. Um, He has since been on a hunt to prove me wrong, and I'm trying to prove, obviously, that this is going to come through and that we're all going to be able to bless the world. And he had found an article the other day that um, Zimbabwe has natural resources and China is mining for them and that they're not hiring Zimbabwe people, that they're hiring their own people. And so my husband had asked me if they um, want to do this great work for the world, why wouldn't they um, have the Zimbabwe people help mining for the resources? So I wanted to see if you can shine any light on that. Well, do we... uh... We don't know. We just read the article, but I'm I'm pretty sure that they're using uh, local Zimbabwe people. Okay. I'm sure they're bring if China if it's China's company, they're going to bring in management and maybe some higher end people to do certain things. But I I just don't see them completely cutting the Zimbabwe people totally out of the picture. Yeah, and that's what my my thought of it was too. So thank you very much for your insight with this. Well, you know, your husband's been laughing, been laughing for a while. He who laughs first does not always laugh last. Exactly. That's that's my point. You know well. what? When it, when this goes down, what I want you to do, it, go out and get a blue moon, stick an orange mm-hmm. in it, put it in front yep. of him, stick a little barrel of drink in it, and say, baby, I love you, but I think you need this more than I do right now. Yeah, I might have to get a little side of crow pie for him too. <laughs> well, you know what? In in crow pie, always tastes good with a with a pretty good dab of Tabasco. Yep, exactly. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks. I appreciate you taking my call. All right, bye. Jerry. Yes, sir. Uh, just a comment about that. 
as far as the way the Chinese have done things in the past, when we look at our own history, if you go back to the beginning of this country and the building of the railroads and stuff like that, they brought a lot of their own people over to do the labor on that too because they were making the investment. So that may have something to do with what she was talking about. True. Oh, my goodness. It It is a surprise caller. Come on in, caller. Aloha. 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 <laughs> All right, Aiko. Aloha. Is that John, too? Aloha. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, to answer that Aloha. lady's question, of, <laughs> not even going to get into the fiat gold back because I've answered it. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of the, um, but I respect anybody's opinion that doesn't believe it to be so. So just want to leave it at that. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, why is China Zimbab uh, mining Zimbabwe resources? Uh, well, Russia's right there with them, and um, and the reason in part uh, that they're using uh, Russian and Chinese um, labor. Uh, in part is because of the technology of the mining is so much more sophisticated uh, with the Chinese and the Russians than with the Zimbabweans because of a lack of resources over the last mm, 36 years, since 1980, uh, since the, they transitioned their government. Uh, but also uh, the minerals of Zimbabwe are so incredibly valuable to the world moving forward for technology, uh, uh, transportation, uh, and unfortunately military as well, protection, uh, that um, they need the, the best possible people on it for the greater good. Uh, in exchange for mining these minerals, the nation of Zimbabwe gets to participate uh, on the new financial system. Um, they get to leverage their nation's assets uh, in terms of uh, buy sell uh, government private placement trades, which allows them to generate, I don't want to say an infinite amount of wealth, but certainly a unbelievable amount of wealth uh, by leveraging the the mineral holdings, gold holdings, diamond holdings. Oh my goodness, the diamond holdings in, in Zimbabwe and C- Central Africa are stunning. So they basically take a loan against that and then go invest it. On a, on a kind of a higher platform or, or government tra- trading apparatus um, that's, uh, that allows them to rebuild their economy, infrastructure, ports, roads, bridges, uh, airports, uh, uh, anything that they would need, housing, poverty. You're going to see such a dramatic shift in not just Zimbabwe over the next 10 years, 20 years, but the entire continent of Africa. It's just it's going to be stunning. Uh, what we thought were the, the poorest countries in the world are going to end up being the richest based on their natural reserves and, and in-ground assets. To answer that question. Would you like to bring in anything else? Um, the floor is yours until you yield the floor, and at that point, I think we're probably going to spool it up and call it a day. So you're, gonna, you're the finish-up person. Well, why don't you let everybody else finish up, and then I'll take the last lick. How about that? Um, literally, that would be Pastor, a comment by me, and then you would take us on out the door. Is that how you want to go? No, it's okay. I've passed his last. I just don't want to. Anyway, so, guys, we're really coming up on the uh, the possibility of, of a miracle happening in in the moment. Um in this moment, in this in this period here, uh, without getting too specific. And again, I just want to encourage everybody to go slow. Um, the, the, neither the banks nor the, the, the people working the exchanges um, have anything but your best interest at heart. So just listen to what they have to, to say, make the best choices, and, and um, try and stay with your breath and, and in control at all times. Um, because when you see some of the rates, what are called sovereign rates, on screens, um, it, it it really might make your heart skip a beat. 
uh, regardless of what currency you have, especially in the early redemption period. Um, and again, I've, I've, I've preached this. I've, I've taken the opportunity to use these calls as, as ministry opportunities to invite people back to God uh, through the heart of Christ. And uh, I can't think of a better moment uh, to surrender your will for the Creator's will when such a massive blessing is about to enter into your, your reality from fantasy and come from heaven to earth. And um, it's at times like these, you know, uh, great tragedy or great victories where it's really important that we we acknowledge and honor the one that created us uh, and um, if your understanding of the life of Christ, uh, your understanding of the sacrifice that was made on your behalf long ago so that you could have this moment and to give honor and thanks and praise and surrender your, uh, I guess, human understanding for a more divine spiritual understanding as you live your human life here on earth moving forward. Uh, it's God's money, not necessarily yours. And we are stewards of his wealth and trustees of his will and his love on earth to share with the world. And uh, again, I just, if you've been thinking about it, hearing me, um, just contemplating how you're going to manage this blessing, I just really encourage you to surrender, come to God, uh, get on your knees and just, and just accept that uh, you are here for a divine purpose and a divine moment for a divine reason that you're going to need help moving forward. And the only place to get that kind of help with this kind of blessing, this kind of magnitude is God and through Christ. And thank you so much for the opportunity and the platform, Jerry, Ico, R. John, for giving me a couple of minutes to to, uh, to share my love for God and some of the understanding I have in this arena. God bless you all, guys. So thank you so much. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. I want to thank everybody. You've allowed me to have a platform to direct people, and I appreciate that. Bring my opinion. Ico brings his. I think we make a good a good pair. There's some things I don't agree with. And occasionally, he and I have discussions about that. No, I think you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Well, that's what. We bounce things off of each other, and I'm I'm zero, I'm very thankful that I have uh, Ico that I can do that with. That's why I call him Rockstar. So as as we close this out, Gabriel, Gabriel, this is God speaking. Are you ready to make a good witness? Can I get a hallelujah? I want you to stand up there when you're six nine and say hallelujah. All right. Thank you, everybody. God bless God bless each and every one of you from from my heart. And I'm going to kick this off to uh, Pastor. Hey, Jerry, what a great job you did today, and Ico and Art and Yosa. Thank you so much for coming in, buddy. Every time you do, you just feel the peace of God. Thank you so much for all that you do for everybody in your life, all of you guys. Father, we ask you to move. Uh, everything that you said deep into our heart, help us to live by it. It's so important, Lord, that we remain at peace and full of your strength. And so we're asking for that in Jesus' name, that you would help us and keep us in peace, keep us in the love of God. Thank you so much for working a work in our lives in this day that's never been seen before. In Jesus' name, bless the people, every one of them. Amen. Amen. Gabriel, put that chicken down. And stop drinking. And no more sweet tea. No more sweet tea, Gabriel. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. The conference is now completed. Goodbye. Welcome to the conference.